First, if you don't right now feel as if you're equipped to get all you want, just remember, ability will grow to match your strong dreams. That's why the goal setting process we've discussed is so important. The more you work on this, the more ideas you will get on how you can change, how you can grow. I am nowhere near the person I was when I met Mr. Shove 25 years ago. I'm not that person anymore. I've changed. There's nothing you can do about the past, but you can do a great deal about your future. You don't have to be the same person you were yesterday. You can make changes in your life, absolutely startling changes, in a fairly short period of time. You can make changes you can't even conceive of now. If you give yourself a chance, your abilities will grow. You have untapped talents and potential that you haven't even reached for yet. And as time goes on, you'll be able to reach deeper and deeper. The first thing you'll know, you'll be able to do things you never thought you could do. You'll be able to handle things you never thought you could handle. There's part of you that either wants to create a business or you obviously already have created a business. The hardest part is taking that first step, right? There's always that line, like I was talking about earlier, that you have to take a step past. But the thing, people always say, well, you know, you're not afraid to start a business. Why, why aren't you, it's terrifying or, you know, I, I just, it scares me to do it. And my, my attitude has always been, if you're prepared, it's not a risk, right? Bobby Knight, who was the coach at Indiana University, used to say, everybody's got the will to win, but it's only those with the will to prepare that do win. And the same applies to business. We've all seen our friends go out there and just wing it. You know, it's my passion. We're all passionate about something. I'm passionate about basketball. It doesn't make me an NBA player, right? It's not just about passion. It's not just about saying I'm doing it. It's not even about incorporating. It's not about the idea. It's about are you prepared and are you willing to do the work? If you configure your life so that what you are genuinely doing is aiming at the highest possible good, then the things that you need to, to survive and to thrive on a day-to-day -day basis will deliver themselves to you. That's a hypothesis, and it's not some simple hypothesis, right? Because it, what it basically says is, if you dare to do the most difficult thing that you can conceptualize, your life will work out better than it will if you do anything else. Well, how are you gonna find out if that's true? Well, it, it's a Kierkegaardian leap of faith. There's no way you're gonna find out whether or not that's true unless you do it. So no, no one can tell you either because just because it works for someone else, I mean, that's interesting and all that, but it's no proof that it'll work for you. You have to be all in in this game. There is no more effective way of operating in the world than to conceptualize the highest good that you can and then strive to attain it. There's no more practical pathway to the kind of success that you could have if you actually knew what success was. The world shifts itself around your aim. Because you're, you're a creature that has an aim. You have to have an aim in order to do something. You're an aiming creature. You look at a point and you move towards it. It's built right into you. And so you have an aim. Well, let's say your aim is the highest possible aim. Well then, so that sets up the world around you. It, it organizes all of your perceptions. It organizes what you see and you don't see. It organizes your emotions and your motivations. So you organize yourself around that aim. And then what happens is the day manifests itself as a set of challenges and problems. And if you solve them properly, then you stay on the pathway towards that aim. And you can concentrate on the, on the, on the day. And so that way you get to have your cake and eat it too, because you can, you can point into the distance, the far distance, and you can live in the day. And it seems to me that that's, that makes every moment of the day supercharged with meaning. That, that's how, because if everything that you're doing every day is related to the highest possible aim that you can conceptualize, well, that's the very definition of the meaning that would sustain you in your life.
think that um, the common thread, and I, I would imagine with all your guests, they share this in common, is that they are, they are lifelong learners. Because anyone who, I think learning, or especially meta-learning, learning how to learn, is one of the, it's like the grandfather or the grandmother of personal growth, or high performance, or self-help, if you will. Because without learning, nothing, with nothing changes. And so I think that one of the common themes is they have a high standard for things. You know, they have a vision. And, you know, I always talk about three H's, head, heart, hands, that you could visualize things with your head um, and, you know, set goals and outcomes and KPIs or affirmations. But if you're not acting with your hands, something is missing. And I think the second H, the, you know, the heart and having the, the motivation or drive, the, the emotion to be able to, to achieve those things because we're not, we're not always logical, right? But we're, we're biological, you know, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins. I mean, we, we do things very um, based on our feelings. And I find that spending time with high achievers, they have a high, uh, high drive. You know, those feelings, a high level of, some people call it purpose. You know, I know you had our buddy Simon on the show, yeah. start with why, but asking yourself like, why? Why do I want to remember this? Why do I want to learn this? Why do I want to achieve that goal? Because reasons reap results. They really do. Reasons reap results and a lot of rewards. And so that's why I love um, watching your show because you provide not only um, the, the insights because people want to know what to do, but then they, you also give them the inspiration to do it. Because a lot of people, they'll get the inspiration, but they're like, what do I do now? You know, but then you're talking and you just, you know, going through your Iron Man. I mean, that must have been grueling. I mean, I love people who test themselves because I really think life, like we really grow the most and live the most when we're playing and practicing at the edge of our limits. You know, because we don't, we're uncomfortable. Exactly. Because <laughs> and I think there, that commonality is, is common with, with high performers or elite mental. educators or philanthropists they're just they're at that level you know whether it's and that another another one uh, Jane Goodall like here another, another you know yeah. here in the UK it's, you know whether it's genius here genius here in their heart I love people who are just disrupting things they're not they're not playing necessarily by the traditional rules usually I read this book called the structure of scientific revolution that says all the big evolutions and advancements and innovations come from people outside the industry you know, because it usually takes somebody, you know, whether it's fashion or technology or automotive, you know, the car industry, it takes someone like an Elon to look uh, from the outside to look in saying, hey, if we were to start completely over right now, zero based thinking, you know, what would, what would cars look like today? You know, so it's not additive. It's just something that's that's fresh. <laughs>